Hello, my name is Darren Warnick. I am the West Coast Sales Manager working in the OEM Commercial Group at Hamilton Robotics. I've been with the company for 10 years where I started as an applications engineer and later as an automation consulting engineer before moving into the sales role. I'm grateful for Curiox and the invitation to present today where I will be discussing the integration of centrifuge, centrifugation devices to liquid handling automation platforms. So as an outline of my presentation, I'll start with a review of centrifugation in sample processing workflows, and then talk about what automated workflows with centrifugation steps have traditionally looked like. I'll then discuss considerations for integrating devices to robotic platforms in general, and then we'll finish with a discussion of and an overview of different centrifuge integration strategies and some of the considerations and consequences that need to be considered when pursuing this option. So first, and, and as any attendee of, of a laboratory automation conference will know that centrifugation is very ubiquitous in sample processing workflows in, in many scientific disciplines, you know, from blood banking to cell biology to chemistry and applied scientists, sciences, you really don't have to look very hard to find a protocol or come across a workflow that requires centrifugation in some way. And the way centrifugation is used is almost as varied as the different kinds, kinds of centrifuges themselves. You find everything from a quick desktop centrifuge to spin down tubes really fast to a several hour, many thousand G spin in an ultra centrifuge that's a, that's a standalone device. And there's a wide variety of capabilities, sizes, and, and prices when it comes to centrifugation. So with the advent of liquid handling automation and, and the liquid handling platforms and the capabilities associated with those platforms, you know, many, many labs look to have a, a workflow that's completely walk away. And these labs that have centrifugation protocols like to integrate centrifuges in their workflow. But to, traditionally, and even including today, centrifugation has often represented a break in, an, in the automated liquid handling workflow. And this is mainly due to the inherently manual nature of centrifugation itself. As, as you're well aware, centrifugation steps include going to the centrifuge, opening the centrifuge up, loading the tubes into maybe individual little compartments or loading the plates, making sure the centrifuge is balanced correctly, closing the door, executing the spin, and then removing everything from the centrifuge. So again, that's a very inherent, a very manual process. And oftentimes it's very difficult to automate and has been in the past. And so the solution many times um, to overcome those challenges is to is to have the centrifugation steps be a breakpoint in liquid handling platform, liquid handling workflows. The liquid handler can complete the upstream components, but then there's a break where the user has to come and remove the tubes and, and do the centrifugation and then reload the tubes on the liquid handling platforms for some of the downstream processing. But there is really an advantage for labs that want to do walkway, inter, inter, uh, walkway workflows, but that requires this integration of this centrifugation steps. And so before we talk about the different solutions that, that exist for inter integration, integrating centrifuges, just a brief mention of what we look for in general when we look to automate um, centrifuges into liquid handling platforms. Obviously, there, again, there's a wide variety of space, of sizes and shapes and, and capabilities of these devices. And so the first thing we need to take into account is what, what is the device size, how big is it, what are the dimensions, and what's the available space on the automation platform? Does it need to be integrated within the envelope of the robot or can it be integrated off the deck or, or, or must it be integrated off the deck due to its size? How accessible is that device? Um, is because we do need to automate the loading and unloading of the specific labwares. If it's not very accessible, that requires a lot of customizations. And so, and lastly, we always look for an external control interface. Can we send commands to the centrifuge device to execute steps so the user doesn't have to push buttons? For example, send a command to open the door, and then the liquid handler would, would load the plate to the centrifuge. We would send another command to close the door and start the spin. So we just need to have that control interface to make this a truly walk away process. 
So the good news is, you know, even though there's a lot of considerations, integration of centrifuges has been successfully done and continues to be successfully done to liquid handling platforms. And what I wanted to discuss now is some of the considerations that need to be taken into a place. It's not something that, you know, you can s specify and it's a very easy solution. There's a lot of things that need to be considered. And I mentioned uh, the integration space itself, whether it's on the deck of the liquid handler or off the deck. Um, some, sometimes if the, if the centrifuge is integrated on the deck, it consumes some valuable deck real estate. And so the work, the total workflow needs to be considered to make sure there's enough room for both the centrifuge and the rest of the components in the workflow. If there's not, or the centrifuge is too big, then we look at integrations outside of the liquid handling platform. And once we do this, um, sometimes custom components are needed. Oftentimes a second transfer robot is required to move labware or different centrifuge buckets from the liquid handling platform into the centrifuge and then back again. So there's a lot of space and, and integration considerations to be had there. Once we have the integration complete, uh, oftentimes when these, these devices spin, they, they cause vibration. And if your liquid handling steps are sensitive, you might have to consider some kind of vibration dampening to minimize that if, if you have a very, a very sensitive aspiration step that needs to be very precise in its volume. And then once you, once you decide on your integration strategy, these systems can sometimes grow in size very quickly once you have, have a centrifuge and a second liquid handling transfer robot and, and then the, or the second plate handling transfer robot and the device itself can require a custom bench and sometimes lab bench spaces at a premium in labs. In addition, you know, for all intents and purposes, uh, assays working in microplate formats are the easiest to support with centrifuge integrations. The, the plates are very easy to manipulate, to pipette to, to move in and out of centrifuge devices. If the assay is not amenable to micro titer plate formats, say you have to remain in tubes, this often requires specialized carriers or other transport customizations to manipulate the tubes from the liquid handling robot to the centrifuge. And then if you work in tubes, a lot of times you have capping and decapping requirements that need to go along with centrifugation. And that adds a little bit more cost and complexity and some very customizations, very specific customizations to do those processes. Um, with complete walk away time you do, in integrating a centrifuge, sometimes that does slow down the process because maybe there are multiple centrifuge steps and, that, and it requires picking a plate up, loading the centrifuge, waiting for the centrifuge to spin, then removing the plate from the centrifuge back to the liquid handling robot. Um, and oftentimes, um, because the assay is linear, the liquid handling robot is, is idle while the centrifugation is taking place. So um, if, speed is a, if speed is a concern, that's something that needs to be taken into consideration. Um, often these centrifugations are integrated off the deck of the instrument. And so the alignment and the positioning of the centrifuge is critical and, and must be really very, re the, the spot where the handoff between the liquid handler and the centrifuge occurs must be very precise because these grippers are often reaching into what we call blind positions. So if it's not completely adjusted properly, there might be transport errors. And so, and then these positions, not only to be precise, they often have to be recalibrated following any kind of, kind of maintenance or any time you, you remove the centrifuge for one reason or another. And so increasing the amount of plate movements off, often adds more complexity to the liquid handling platform. And you know, when we, when we integrate centrifuges, often we are working with, as a downstream component, the removal of a supernatant or, or, or siphoning off the excess material and leaving a pellet behind. And many times these pellets are not in a reproducible position in the tube or in the plate. And so it can make it difficult for a liquid handling platform and a pipetter to um, aspirate the supernatant off of a pellet while not disturbing the pellet. So there's, it could add complexity to either both the downstream and even the upstream processes as well, which also needs to be taken into account. And then finally, the, the cost of the system. You know, integration of a centrifuge, possibly a second robotic arm, plus any custom labware carriers, you know, and, and on and on. 
the system can get a little bit pricey very quickly um, once we once we talk about a complete walk away automation solution. So basically, the bottom line is, you know, centrifugations are possible. They have been done successfully in the past and, and can be done. But there are many considerations that need to be taken into account to make sure that workflow is not only robust, but, but successful and, and the end result of the assay or the sample process step is successful. And with that, I will turn it back over to the Curiox team. Thank you, Darren. Hi, my name is Anne, and I'm the field application scientist from Curiox, here to do a presentation today on the Lemino Wash platforms. Many researchers have taken the centrifugation step for granted, as until recently, it has been the only method to remove excess reagents from suspension cells. But have you considered what centrifugation might do to your cells? In this image showing cells expressing endogenous red fluorescent protein, or RFP, spiked into non-fluorescent cells, Samples washed by centrifuge are observed to be lower in count, distorted in morphology, and importantly, have lower expression of RFP. This can be contrasted with the cells that did not undergo centrifugation shown on the right. The cells appear viable and are significantly brighter. Now looking at the big picture, the red fluorescent protein in this image can represent any protein of interest to your cells. These checkpoint proteins are sensitive to mechanical handling. It is possible to wash our cells to reduce nonspecific background staining while maintaining fidelity to protein expression with laminar wash, just as this happy user did. The problem of cell wash in the centrifuge is also well documented. In the bar chart on the right, you can see the cells washed in the centrifuge lost increasingly higher percentages of cells as compared to laminar wash, which maintained a relatively constant cell recovery rate. Now let's watch a short three minute video on how laminar wash works. The automated laminar wash system by Curiox offers a standardized way to wash cells without centrifugation. Wells on the laminar wash plate have a hydrophilic surface inside low profile walls, including two smaller satellite areas and are separated by a proprietary hydrophobic surface. These uniquely engineered plates maintain each sample in a separate droplet, held in place by surface tension and hydrophobic interactions with the surrounding material. Samples ranging from a single cell up to approximately 10 million cells in a buffer are dispensed onto the plate using manual or automated pipetting systems. Gravity then causes the cells to fall to the bottom of the wells where they settle gently on the hydrophilic coating without any physical attachment. This allows cells to continue binding reagent from the buffer solution, which is critical for downstream processing, while cell debris, contaminants, and unbound proteins float in the buffer solution. Next, the plate is loaded into the laminar wash system. The user-friendly touchscreen interface allows users to customize the flow rate and number of washes to suit individual applications. During the run, a set of two nozzles is lowered into each well, a total of 192 per plate. The nozzles come in contact with the liquid in the dual satellite areas flanking each well. The nozzles initiate laminar flow by precisely dispensing and aspirating buffer at the opposing satellite areas of each well. The low wall in combination with low flow rate creates laminar flow with the greatest velocity at the top while rates are near static at the bottom where the cells of interest are located. The initial wash cycle removes free-floating debris and other unwanted precipitates, leaving the cells at the bottom intact and unperturbed. The dispensing and aspirating of wash buffer are then repeated for the number of cycles chosen by the user. In subsequent washes, unbound antibodies and small molecules are removed from the cells by diffusion, and the dilution increases exponentially each cycle, providing a thorough and gentle wash. A key feature of the laminar wash system is that the cells on the surface of the plate are well retained at a minimal loss, unperturbed, maintaining viability and specific antigen-antibody interactions on their surface and in the cytoplasm. At the end of the run, the cells are retained in a minimal volume of clean buffer, and the plate can then be processed for downstream applications. The laminar wash family of systems has a variety of throughput and automation level to suit every workflow and budget. The Compact Size Mini is an eight-wall washing station with a throughput of a 16-wall strip. 
and it's popular amongst mass cytometry and single cell sequencing users. The higher throughput, a streamlined workflow, the HT2000 shown here with an LCD touchscreen interface, and an optional automated buffer exchanger can process 96 walls at once. The Auto 1000 on the left integrates an HT2000 and a buffer exchanger onto a Hamilton Nimbus platform with an automated liquid handling system. It comes pre-programmed with modifiable protocols that are easy for the user to immediately use with no programming needed. The platform is designed to produce the most quantitative and reproducible results for flow cytometry users by reducing user variability and day-to-day -day variation prevalent in flow cytometry. Unlike custom automation or centrifugation-based systems, the Auto 1000 provides an easy turnkey automation and exceptional flexibility. In addition, the Auto 1000 is much more compact, more affordable, and lower maintenance than automation systems built around centrifugation. The compact footprint of laminar wash platforms allow complete segregation of the workflow within a biosafety cabinet and reduces aerosolization of infection samples caused by centrifugation. Laminar wash systems are also amenable to partial workflow automation as shown here with a Thermo Fisher Orbiter microplate mover or complete automation with an Auto 1000 robotic system as shown in the last slide. Replacement of this centrifugation simplifies the automation setup, making automation now more affordable and compact. Again, the HD2000 system can be integrated into a simple plate mover or a large deck high capacity automation workstation. The API included with the automation bundle is composed of approximately one dozen commands that operate the washer and the tray for robotics to retrieve the plate. Here we'll watch a movie of the HD2000 system integrated with the PAA S-Lab Pro. This demo is set up to show what washing a small batch of plates would look like. The demo shows a stack of plates with suspension cells ready to be washed, say after an incubation period. The plate handler is going to remove the plate lid, then place the plate into the washer, which will simulate a cell wash. In order to integrate a centrifuge with automation, there will be over a dozen steps to automate per cycle of washing in the centrifuge. A two-time centrifuge wash would take over 20 steps and involve a centrifuge, a plate gripper, aspiration and dispensing of new buffer, and a vortexer. With the Laminar Wash HD2000, all of those steps and components are accomplished by one instrument and one step. In this slide, the data is showing an increased consistency by just automation of the washing of cells during a flow cytometry protocol with an HD2000 washer. This data is kindly provided by Adaset Bio and is available on our website in the webinar section. Adaset Bio was interested in achieving higher reproducibility of their cell therapy product and development. They were able to reduce their CVs to low single digits in most cases between different operators, even for very rare cell types like gamma delta T cells as shown here. This slide demonstrates just how different replicates can be without automation. The Tisney groupings of three replicates in a 23-plex Cytoff experiment here show the clustering of the three replicates as distinct bands in the conventional centrifuge protocol, whereas the laminar wash process samples show up as a homogeneous population. Clearly, these replicates are not identical when processed with a centrifuge. And with the HC2000 system integrated with an automated workstation or the Laminar Wash Auto 1000 turnkey system, reproducibility can be further improved. In conclusion, Laminar Wash systems can be easily integrated into many automation platforms. Curox offers the Laminar Wash Auto 1000 as a turnkey system for flow cytometry protocols. Automation of cell-based assays saves full-time employees time and increases reproducibility across operators, locations, and times. The integration of a Laminar Watch HD2000 is much easier compared to integrating a centrifuge, and it only involves one step. Automation of your next-generation high-color flow cytometry assays, single-cell genomics or proteogenomics, or any other assay requires a next-generation sample prep system instead of a centrifuge.